In this episode of Shuren, we ascend Table Mountain, the main adventure of this game. To start the quest, we head to the east side of Canyon Hamlet. We begin with the Old Cedar Road. We want to explore this floor thoroughly, because monsters here are weak and we can scavenge for items, such as the Scroll of Need. We fight our first enemy, the Chintala. Killing it yields experience, which we need to level up and increase our HP and damage output. Now let's explore the rest of this level. We already found the stairs to the next floor. It's denoted by the Cyan Square in the map overlay. We'll return there later. Frequently in this game, we encounter NPCs. They provide hints, give items, or advance side quests. The Vagabond will eventually unlock a bonus dungeon, the Tainted Path. Overlays will summarize what most NPCs say. That big belly seed we found increases max bonus by 10. In this roguelike, bonus decreases by 1 for every 10 actions, so we want to large max that, or else we starve to death. Traps can be revealed by swinging a weapon over a tile. Most traps right now are harmless though. Three side quest NPCs may also randomly appear in this floor. One is now Gita the Wandering Chef, who unlocks the Kitchen God bonus dungeon. The other two, Keiichi the Masseur and Oryu the Blinder, are recruitable allies. They do not appear here, but we need not worry. For now we focus on building our inventory. We have a healing item, the medicinal herb, and here the long range weapon, wooden arrows. In this room we find Gitans, the game's currency. We put it in our inventory instead of the spending reserve, shown in the upper right. As we learned in Puzzle 47, Gitans can be thrown to deal massive damage to enemies. We have collected everything on this floor. Let's proceed to the next. If we have an herb of sight, we could cure this girl, and she would raise our strength, increasing our damage output. Too bad we don't have one. No new enemies appear on this floor. We could have met the mammal in floor 1, but it did not spawn then. For now, let's continue collecting items. Fortunately, we obtained a scroll of need in the previous floor. As we learned in Puzzle 20, the scroll of need is needed in the jam. For instance, enemies are paralyzed when we read one. At low health, the scroll restores it all. We were very lucky to find one in floor 1. Additional information about the scroll is included in the annotation. In this roguelike, some items are randomly named when found, so we don't know their effects. This poses a problem in later floors when we pick up unknown items, such as this cypress staff. A staff is swung to cast magic, but we don't know what kind of staff we have. Does it help or hurt enemies? Fortunately, items are identified when we enter towns, which we will do in a few floors. We also obtain a kaijo and bronze ward, weak but adequate for now. We are lucky they are not cursed, a topic we covered in Puzzle 37. There are two floors to this new area, Mountain Stream. Two old monsters from the Old Cedar Road also appear here, and two new beasts are introduced in this area. Nothing sinister appears here yet. Again we want to fight as many monsters for experience and build our inventory. The first new enemy, the Snakey, has relatively high attack and HP. Fortunately, we have sufficient equipment and health points as well. A new NPC, the kindly old man gives food or healing items when we are in a critical condition. There is another old man with the same sprite who takes food from us though, he is dangerous. That Drain Buster we picked up deals 2 times damage to Drain type enemies. Drain enemies usually don't appear until floor 15, and we don't want to equip the weapon right now because it might be cursed. With this final room, we have explored all of floor 3. Let's meet back at the exit. We are one floor away from the first rest town. On this floor, we no longer encounter the mini robber. There is a new enemy, the pickpocket. It's a monster that tries to steal money. 
Luckily, most of our money is in our inventory and not the spending reserve. The spinning trap temporarily confuses us. We hold A and B to burn turns quickly and cure our confusion. With this shield, fullness decreases by 1 for every 20 turns, not 10. It's 2 points weaker than the bronze word though. This woman is one of the three important NPCs we can meet early in the game. Oryu, the blinding woman, is a recruitable ally. However, she doesn't like us right now. Let's try to cure our blindness by holding A and B again. We will have to talk to her in later adventures, until she warms up to us. We find the exit, but we should explore the rest of the floor. A nerf plus scroll upgrades shield defense, usually by one point. However, shields have limits. Our hide shield can be upgraded by only 15 points. The bronze ward has a limit of 35. Since the next area is a town, this unidentified staff will be identified shortly. We arrive in Bamboo Village. These two NPCs appear here only after we meet Oryu. Let's talk to them. We will see them again later when we try to recruit the blinding woman. For now, let's enter the Green Bamboo, the local shop of this village. Unfortunately, that useless guy is a potential ally. We will want to talk to him. In the meantime, let's take a look at the shop. Surprise! Our staves are now identified when we are in a town. The numbers in brackets indicate the charges, also our sloth staff is cursed, near useless. Now let's send the money in our inventory to the spending reserve. We want the master sword. It has 8 base attack, or our kajo has only 2. Before we leave, let's initiate a side quest. The game throws at us more unlikely scenarios, but let's humor it. Off screen we sell the bronze ward since we have our hide shield. The paralysis staff also sells for a good price. And we purchase an additional rice ball. Inside this building is Goro. He carries a wagon to provide shortcuts to other rest towns. We want to talk to him later in the game when we unlock those rest towns. It sounds like the next area has many dangerous monsters. Actually, the game becomes much harder after this point. We're back near the village entrance. Let's now enter the blacksmith's store. We don't have enough money. For every run beginning from Canyon Hamlin, the blacksmith offers his services. We could exploit this by backtracking all the way to the hamlet and grinding for upgrades, but let's not. The fortune teller mentions winds. In this game we are limited a thousand turns for every floor, after which the winds of Kron can blow us back to the hamlet. Usually we can complete a floor within 300 turns though. At the northern edge of town we meet the blacksmith's apprentice, part of a minor side quest. Every time we arrive in this village we want to talk to her, but she will be located in various parts of town. Finally, let's meet in the bar of Yodor as we promised Pekachi.
to meet with Pekichi again to recruit him. The re remaining NPCs here warn us about the monsters in the next area, Pegasus Ridge. Let's take care of some preparations before we depart. Off screen, we sold our staff of sloth and bought another $800 Earth Blood Scroll. Now let's continue our table mounting quest. The Pegasus Rage.